laid down by Indian Constitution. I'm afraid I have shared this story with you, but I cannot prevent the temptation of repeating you, repeating it, or rather repeating, uh, telling it even at the risk of repetition to some of you. How people's perceptions were changed about the contribution of Indian Constitution. In the drafting stage in the late 40s and early 50s, practically late 40s, because it was, drafting job was completed in November 1949. It was implemented on 26 January 1950. One of the outstanding British politicians was highly critical a personal friend of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, who used to write to him and told him that your experiments with Indian people to implement this new document is highly optimistic, but perhaps you will not be able to implement it because of the inherent weakness of Indian system, its poverty, backwardness, illiteracy, and moreover, it's conservatism. I had the privilege of sharing some of my experiences with Madras Chamber of Commerce and Industry just a couple of days back. What I told them, here I would like to repeat. You are doing that job, but still, I would also like to emphasize that there is a need of instilling confidence in our entrepreneurs, in our investors, in our leaders in the industry and business. Because somehow or other we find sometimes negative aspects of the issues appear more prominently than positive aspects. For instance, when we talk of environmental protection, we only project the negative stories, but the figure which I have just quoted, that silently at the initiative of CII, how the green technology Green movement is taking shape and expanding itself. There are many examples. Yes, our growth rate has been slow, particularly since the global financial crisis 2008-9, it was 6.7 percent. 2011-12, it has recorded 6.5 percent. The first quarter of 2012-13 is 5.5 percent. No doubt, disappointing. Yes, current account deficit around 4 percent is surely a matter of concern. Fiscal deficit, if it is not confined to 5.1 percent of the GDP, as projected in the budget, and one of the concomitant of which that we must reduce the subsidies and keep it below 2% of GDP is not materialized would pose serious problems. Our slowdown of export from the previous year's record of 30% growth is no doubt an area of concern. But side by side, if we look at the process of diversification of the export basket commodities and direction, geographical direction of the export destination, we will find that the picture is not totally disappointing. If we take a little longer, larger canvas, little longer period of time, 
of projecting the performance of the country, you will find that is not to be disappointed to the extent sometimes I find through our own responses. As I mentioned to you, I always refer the other period of crisis, not to find any justification for the present crisis, but only to drive consolation and get back confidence that if we have overcome those problems in past, it is possible for us to overcome the problems which we are facing today and we can move ahead for future. Coming to the stories of the growth, most respectfully I can say, when did we have very high rate of growth? Since the beginning of our developmental exercise from 1951 to 1979, almost three decades we had an annual average growth of 3.5%. In the decade of 80s we had 5.2%. In the decade of 90s, we had a GDP growth of 6%. After 91, we entered into 6.6 to 6.7%. And in the last decade, our GDP growth has been 2003-04 to 2011-12. It is around 8.75% annual average. Of this 10-year period, if you look at, Three years, yes, we had 9% growth. Two years, we had 6% plus. 2008 9 financial crisis year. Again, we had some round turnaround in 2010 11, 11 12, 8.4%. And 11 12 with the Eurozone crisis and volatility of the international. Commodity prices, including oil, we had slow growth of 6.5%. But in a space of 10-year period, our annual average growth of 8.75%, compared to many other countries, we did not feel totally discouraged or disappointed. And it is not because of the policy matters. It is not because of the contribution of the administrators and policy makers. It is the contribution of the Indian people, Indian entrepreneurs, our workers, our managers, our farmers, our forward-looking trade and business leaders. Collectively, we have been able to contribute. I'm emphasizing on collectively, on togetherness. If we work together, if we collectively make efforts to overcome our difficulties, none can restrain. And CII can do that, provide that leadership, provide the guidance to all stakeholders. The last point to my young friend representing the Northeast. I would like to take this opportunity of congratulating the young men and women of the Northeast who are not only coming out in large number and proving their talents, competence, and <laughs> showing their excellence in different branches, starting from civil service to the leadership of the industries, management, entrepreneurial skill, and last but not the least, one medicum can make us really proud of the performance of the young men and women of the Northeast. I do not know whether you watched, but whole India was one for the success of medicum and three, four days, we waited for <coughs> waiting breath 
that we must see one gold, uh, one medal was assured, but whether she can bring gold for us or not, that was the deep concern for all of us. And whole India had one expectation, had one desire, and that is the story of emerging India, resurgent India, and I'm quite confident we will see this emerging resurgent India in our lifetime. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, if I have exceeded my brief little bit. Thank you.